Hi, I'm John Holland, Community Outreach Specialist for the Oshkosh Fire Department. Welcome to this edition of On Fire. Today we are at Station 16 on the west side of Highway 41. This is the Hazmat House. We're going to take a quick tour of Station 16 and then we will talk to one of our Hazmat technicians and he'll tell you a little bit more about what Hazmat is and what the Oshkosh Fire Department does as part of the Hazmat team. Right now we are in the office here at Station 16. What you're looking at behind me um, are TVs that we use for training. Um, there's a main hub at the downtown fire station and then every station has these TVs. And what it does is we can train every single station from one spot instead of bringing them all downtown. We used to bring all the trucks downtown and do the training. It was a lot of wear and tear on the trucks, um, moving firefighters out of position. Now they can do it right here at their station and it works out very well. It's a money saver, it's a time saver, and um, we're lucky that we're able to do it. We are now in the lounge here at Station 16. Um, firefighters can be in here at their lunch time or any time after 4.30. And that's when their duty day ends. They work from seven in the morning until seven the next morning, and then they get two days off. But their actual firefighter duty day ends at 4.30, so they can be anywhere they want as long as they are in the station. They can work out, they can watch TV, whatever they wanna do, but obviously they still have to stay right here. One interesting little thing here in their lounge is they have a water rescue line gun. And what this is, is in the old days, they would take this gun and it has a rope hooked on it right here. If there was someone in trouble in the water, they would actually load up this gun and shoot the bullet over the person's head and so they could get a line to them and pull them in. Um, obviously, in this day and age, we have a whole lot safer ways of getting people out of the water. Right now we are in the workout room. It is tucked away upstairs here at the fire station. And like I mentioned before, firefighters can work out here at, at their lunch time or any time after 4.30. We are in the kitchen here at station 16. Um, when the firefighters come in, every day they decide what are they gonna have to eat they pool their money together, they go to the store, buy what they're gonna have, prepare what they're gonna have, clean up after what they make, and they have lunch together every single day, and it's about 11 o'clock. That's a traditional thing from times past where people had wooden stoves. Firefighters wanted to make sure that they got their lunch in before everyone else started lighting their house on fire. So at 11 o'clock, they would eat, and again, we buy our own food. The table right here was made by actual firefighters that worked here. The money was donated by other firefighters. This was on our 150th anniversary, which was in 2006. Um, the guys here actually made this themselves. This is all done by our firefighters here. Um, this great little display up here was also made by a bunch of our firefighters and it kind of gives them ownership of their home makes it feel a little bit more like it is theirs. Here we are inside Station 16. Um, station 16, besides being the hazmat house, is the only fire station on the west side of Highway 41. So it takes care of everything obviously to the west side of 41, West Haven, Rushfield area. Um, it has a fire engine, and this actually we have a special one. We have a fire rescue vehicle. Um, it has the jaws of life on it because we are so close to Highway 41. And we have an ambulance out here. We have a spare ambulance out here. And then we also have the hazmat rig. 
Speaking of the hazmat rig, let's go talk to CJ and he'll tell us more about the Northeast Wisconsin hazmat team, which we are a part of. My name is CJ Wadel. I'm an equipment operator with the City of Oshkosh Fire Department. I've been working for the city for approximately 18 years now. I am a hazmat specialist. My specialty is metering and monitoring. This is Hazmat 116, one of three response units that we have for hazardous materials. Uh, in a simplistic uh, way, it's anything that is out in the environment that doesn't belong there. Uh, it could be nuclear, chemical, biological, or it could be something as simple as a milk truck that was in, involved in an incident and lost the contents of its cargo on the, on the roadway. If you look at what we have running through the city, uh, we have Canadian Nationals major rail line running right through downtown over on Broad Street. Uh, they ship everything. Uh, one of their biggest commodities that they ship through Oshkosh is crude uh, from the oil fields out in North Dakota. And that comes through here on a daily basis. And there is a substantial amount of, of product that comes through here. Uh, we also have Highway 41, which is the main thoroughfare between Green Bay and Milwaukee and just about anything you can imagine that we consume or is used to produce what we consume travels down that roadway. A lot of what we do now uh, ends up being commercial vehicles that, that encounter issues where uh, we were just out on a call a few months ago where a, a semi-tractor trailer had a mechanical fault. The transmission punctured a hole in the saddle tanks, the fuel tanks, and the hydraulic tank and it lost the contents, the fuel and the hydraulic fluid on the interstate. Uh, we had to go there and contain it and tr try and collect as much as we could. And we have various ways. Uh, we'll try plugging the leak in the tank. Uh, we have uh, air actuated pumps. We'll pump it off, pump all that fuel out of, out of the tank into uh, 55 gallon drums. The, there's several types of teams throughout the state of Wisconsin uh, and they vary in different levels of capacity. We cover Northeastern Wisconsin. We do that in conjunction with Appleton Fire and Green Bay Fire. So basically everything from Northern Wisconsin on this side of the state down to uh, final, Southern Fond du Lac County line, Sheboygan, all the way out to the Wisconsin River past Washera County. Uh, we cover that area in conjunction with Appleton and Green Bay. Uh, we, that way we share resources. The, the team is partially funded by the state of Wisconsin. So if we put multiple agencies together, we can have a lot of different equipment, more equipment. Currently, we have uh, around 23 to 25 individuals on the department that are hazmat uh, personnel. It, the hiring process is changing a little bit. Uh, when I came on, you had to be a, a, a hazardous material technician to get hired. Uh, they're looking at some different things, and, and that might not be the case. But as you're here, if you become interested in joining the hazmat team, uh, the department sends you to the appropriate schooling so you can do that. Every firefighter is trained up to a certain point. We call that awareness and operations. Anything you do above that takes some additional training. Uh, some of the classes are held at Fox Valley Technical College Public Safety Training Center. Some classes are held at the REAC Center over at Volk Field. Uh, there's also specialty classes that you can take uh, throughout the United States put on by the Department of Homeland Security. Some of the classes that I've been involved with is I've flown out to the Nevada test site, took a chem uh, nuclear radiological class out there for two weeks, teaches you how to monitor and meter for nuclear radiological type incidences. There's other classes you could take down in say Alabama where they deal with chemical biological substances. Uh, so the classes are all over. Uh, you, what you do is you, you, you have to be, in order to enter the, the hot zone, as we say, uh, where you put on the suit and go in and solve the problem, you have to be up to a technician level. And so that training you would get in the state through Fox Valley Tech or the REAC Center, and then you would go out for those specialty courses out to other areas, depending on what your jurisdiction has for hazards. Here are some of the meters that we use to detect product that may be out here. This meter is called Jerome. Uh, it uh, indicates whether there's mercury in the area. These are nuclear radiological meters. Uh, over here we have single gas meters. Uh, this, these happen to be for chlorine. 
Uh, we do a lot up in Nina where there's uh, chlorine is used in the paper production industry. These are multi gas meters, five gas meters. They will look for things like CO, uh, sewer gas, oxygen levels, combustible gases. Some of the meters have pumps where they draw the air into it, uh, which is this kind of, and you'll hear it if I fired it up, it would be a pump. Uh, it takes a certain amount of time for me to be able to get a reading. Uh, radiation is a, a different kind of thing. Uh, so these are different kinds of sensors. It just senses the environment around it, uses different kinds of tubes to tell if there's radio radioactive particles in the area. Uh, these meters here are passive. Uh, the chlorine meters that we use, single gas, uh, we have to be in the environment a lot longer to be able to sense those products. So. I, I know what I, I need to look for, and I know what meters to send with the guys that are going to go down range. I can actually monitor from this trailer uh, via this computer what ratings they're getting down range, and I can convey that to the incident commander. I give them an accurate picture of what's going on on a minute by minute basis. So. Thanks for joining us for this edition of On Fire. We hope you enjoyed our tour of Station 16. We'd like to thank CJ for showing us around the hazmat rig and telling us a little bit more about hazmat. Until next time, stay safe and we'll see you on On Fire.